So, I'm recording this after doing the work as just kind of follow up on this video. Sorry for the poor quality audio. This camera's audio is bad. The remote mic I bought was worse than the audio on this camera. It's raining on my metal shop and I've got a fan running because it's hot and humid. So, anyway, I just finished the uh, throttle body sync on the my MT-07. I've got a little over 5,000 miles on this bike and didn't do it initially. Now, I made a simple manometer out of, I put some two-stroke oil in here because it's colored, and this is a quarter-inch vinyl tube. I already covered this in the video. I'm covering it again, I guess. And I found that windshield wiper, I mean, windshield washer line that was, uh, I don't know what it did with the pack now, but anyway, windshield washer line that was the right size of four millimeters that fits on the uh, nipples on there. I just want to go back into this video and say this is not a how-to video. This is more of a tips and tricks video the way I did it. Uh, you can just lift the tank up. You actually don't have to take the tank off the motorcycle. Just take the tank bolts out, leave one loose as a pivot point, and put a 4x4 four four block up under here so I could get access down here. But, uh, yeah, you want the bike to get up to operating temperature. I like mine get let this get up to 200-something degrees so it's getting hot and before you start adjusting this but and I started messing with it before the bike was warm but I did notice right off the bat uh, one side of this was a lot higher and it's going to be hard to get this exact but you rev the bike a few times let it settle back down idle adjust rev a few times adjust and uh, hopefully after a few times of doing that this will come back to real close to even if it's just slightly different it's fine like I said, not a how-to, but more of a tips and tricks. I do have the factory service manual for this bike, which is good, but, I mean, it's not really a detailed uh, instruction manual. It's got, it gives you the idea of what you need to do and shows you what you need to take off and so forth. But I had to do, you know, like the tip of the gas tank stuff. It tells you to take the gas tank off, but, you know, it doesn't tell you how to test the motorcycle with the gas tank off because... You can't do this if the bike's not running, and the bike won't run unless the gas tank's hooked up. And you can't sit the gas tank on the back of the bike out of the way and hook the fuel line up. So, yeah. And the biggest step you can do is if you are unbolting the gas tank or moving it around, be very careful not to uh, break the fuel nipple off the uh, fuel line on the tank or you know, damage the wiring on the bike. But this is a very tight motorcycle. I mean, Everything, everything inside of this bike is fitted very tight and hard to get to. So, having a pair of uh, forceps like that is is uh, good to get in tight spots. Um, the little cap I had on this nipple, it I dropped it and it went down in the motor somewhere, probably under the starter. So it's gone. I had to make my own cap. I just folded over a piece of that. Uh, uh, windshield wiper tube and use safety wire to squeeze it together you know, it's just in a pinch, you know, pinch the hose into a bin so man it makes a ceiling cap so it, it serves the same purpose and I can look in there at any time and see it and see if it's still holding up but uh let's see now, it's not the most ideal I mean it'd be better to have a cap obviously but I couldn't find one at the park store and I'm not going to wait and order one and pay an arm and a leg but yeah, you can probably see it in there. I can't put my finger on it. You can see the little wire on the piece of rubber about dead center of the camera. I'm doing a throttle body sink. Uh, the bike, right off idle, there's a little bit of hesitation or something. And that can be because I never did sink the throttle body. And uh, I'm making a gauge to do that. Actually, I'm uh, changing the battery to the original battery, which you know, over three years old has gone bad. So... Going with this Duralast uh, AGM battery as a replacement. I think this was 60 something dollars. I got the receipt out there, but it's not that expensive. Uh, put it on the charger there. But I've got the uh, plastic exhaust and gas tank uh, loose here, and I've got the. Yeah, it's hard to see in here. So there's a nipple right there that had a cap on it that goes on the throttle body, I'm going to make a manometer to uh, measure the pressure difference between the uh, two throttle bodies 
using a piece of quarter inch vinyl sheets that they fill with a oil and then this piece of uh, Prestone 4 millimeter uh, windshield washer hose is the exact same size hose that goes on the uh, throttle body fitting so and you can pick, pick this up I picked this up at O'Reilly's back on one of the shelves in the store and then of course the clear vinyl tube came from my load so I'm gonna work on building that there's a screw there's an air bleed screw on the throttle body on the right side of the bike and you adjust the air bleed screw to get the uh, throttle body balanced at idle once the engine's warmed up some so that's what we're gonna work on is Okay, guys, I got the uh, manometer uh, hooked up here. Uh, I took my windshield washer hose and cut a length, hooked it down here into the, uh, I don't know if you can see it down there, the, into the nipple down there on the throttle body, and it may just be impossible to see, I don't know. It's hard to see, but there's a nipple right down there where my fingertip is going. And this hose is, is just shoved into this quarter inch hose and then the nice little manometer works like this. They're both equal, there's no pressure on it. There's a difference, one side will be higher than the other and you adjust on the screw until you get this the same when the bike's warmed up uh, idling. So, um, got it hooked up here and same thing on this side. Uh, you can probably see it better on this side. Let's see. Yeah, right there. You can see it real good right there. Right there. That hose. The other throttle body has the same thing. So we've got this, this hose here. And I've got it hooked into the other side. So yeah, this will suck air through on both sides. And uh, the adjustment screw is actually... See if you can see that. Man, it's hard to tell. I can't see anything on this camera. The adjustment screw is right where my fingertip is. Okay, so this screwdriver is in there. See it right by the gray connector. The screwdriver is down there on the screw, the adjustment screw. And it should sit there with the motor running. I'm not 100% sure it might bounce out. It's, this bike is very tight to work on. I had to unplug the fuel connector here to even get to the get this hose on right here. So um, yeah, the fuel injection connector right there. This is a very sensitive adjustment. Barely turn that like maybe an eighth of a turn and it moves. Let the bike warm up, but just keep turning the screw down there until you can. Uh, Holding my hand down on it, it's kind of hard to turn it in still, but yeah, I'm trying to let it warm up and get this to equalize. Now let the bike come up to operating temperature, up to 199 now, and look at that. We have it up, got them real close. I mean, it's very, a very sensitive adjustment, but we got it. Okay, so I got the valve adjustment done and did get the test ride in. And I can tell you it made a huge difference in how smooth this engine performs. Uh, the throttle response on this bike was, uh, it was a little twitchy right as you would come onto the throttle. It'd be a little bit jerky and kind of have a sort of hesitation going on. Uh, after adjusting the throttle sink, the throttle is super, super smooth. And it's very linear, and this bike has a stock ECU and all that. And uh, it just really made this bike perform really well. And the, on, the vibration seems a little less overall. But uh, the tools I used was well, this set of uh, uh, metric Allen wrenches. Uh, this is a screwdriver that fit down in there to the adjustment and then some forceps and various pliers and stuff. But this is a pretty basic tool, but to uh, start this process, because I'm going backwards here, but you have to take these air scoops off by taking this screw out, and there's the end. This bike's real dirty. 
and there's a screw right there. And this air screw, air scoop has clips under here, so what you do is just pull, just grab on it here and pull up on it, and then it'll pop loose and come off. And then once you get this air scoop off and the one on the other side, which is the same, you take your top cover off, which has uh, two screws here, and I think there's another screw to it uh, somewhere. It may be up under here. I think it's actually up under here. I can't. Yeah, I think there. Yeah, there's two screws up here, and then there's. I think there's some under there. But yeah, once once you get these uh air scoops off though it is pretty self-explanatory and easy to figure out um yeah, you can't really see in here and the other thing i wanted to note was this vacuum hose on this side goes to a sensor which you have to unplug for this bike to run and i think this is a map sensor i believe so when you start the bike without this sensor connected and there's also another sensor it's up under here that had to be disconnected to uh, move the gas tank back. When you disconnect those sensors, it does cause the uh, bike to get a uh, check engine light, and the bike does not run very good when it's cold. This bike shut off a couple of times until it got warmer, and I think you notice on the first clip of it running, it's kind of surging, and that's because those sensors are, sensors are disconnected, and ECU can't tell what's going on. And uh, to reset the, a I mean, not ABS, to reset the check engine light, I think you just disconnect the battery and reconnect it, because I did, I, I did do that, and the check engine light was no longer on when I got back on it to uh, run it, but, yeah, it's well worth, worth it to take the time to do this, especially if you, if you think your bike's idling kind of rough, or has a little hesitation, or verbal hesitation, or something, Especially right as you're opening the throttle, you need to sink your throttle bodies. In sinking the throttle bodies, you only sink, you only turn the screw on the uh, right hand uh, side, on the right hand throttle body side. You don't mess with the air bleed screw on the other side. Because this throttle body has a cable on one side, and it's two throttle bodies molded into one. So they're not independent. Both butterflies are connected to the same shaft, so the only way you can balance it is by adjusting the air bleed, but the manual tells you to adjust the air bleed on this side only, which I guess you technically could do it on either side, but the uh, air bleed is very sensitive, turning it like a sixteenth of a turn can, you know, can throw your uh, balance off a lot, but and I think that should conclude this video. I hope this was helpful. If you got any questions or comments on it, just let me know.